Today, we have three more episodes of The Punisher Season 2, episodes 4, 5, and 6, and only episodes 4, 5, and 6. Uh, we will talk about those right now. The Punisher After Show starts now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Punisher After Show. We're indeed doing a jigsaw puzzle here. Yes, I'm very proud of myself. Very nice. Uh, are you proud of me, Zia? I am. That was yeah. a really good one. Thank you. You know, sometimes the, the music, uh, <laughs> I have to call attention to it because I want to make sure that uh, that I get my, my, my propers, as it were. I'm Christian Blatt. Uh, joined again by Zia Anderson for another three episodes of Yay. The Punisher Season 2. Uh, for those of you watching live, we have a very lively chat. So uh, please give us your thoughts on these episodes. If you feel compelled to talk about episodes one through three, go ahead and throw some things in there. But we don't want to talk about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We don't it want to seems, talk about it. it seems good so far. Renji90998 just finished episode six. So, like, just in time to join us. You know who else just finished Ooh. episode six? This guy <laughs> literally just finished it. So, uh, we, will, uh, we will talk about all three of those. And uh, welcome to everybody in the chat. And uh, Zia, welcome back. I'm glad that uh, we're getting to talk about it again. It hasn't been very long since we talked about this. It was just last night we did episodes one It was just one last night. Three. And also, I talked about it more when I got home. Oh, okay. And then now I'm back to talk about it some more. And we just never I stopped just talking about The Punisher. No. Uh, well, let's uh, start off with episode four, which is called uh, Scar Tissue. We do get the flashback that uh, we kind of alluded to uh, in yesterday's show and yesterday's after show that uh, we have some of the sessions with Billy, and uh, that character's name is Dr. Dumont, or Dumont, but uh, Dumont with a hard T, I believe. And we get to see him working to try and recover his memories and his strength, and we do find out, you know, we are familiar with Billy's backstory, but this is how she finds out about it. Uh, and I believe that that's when we see the the mask for the first time. Well, we see him create the mask. It's not when we see it for the first time. We see the birth of the mask. So, uh, Zia, your thoughts on Billy's interaction at, at this point, as we are in episode four, his interaction with uh, his therapist. I mean, at the entire time, I'm thinking there's something about this therapist that seems just a little bit sketchy. Yeah. And even just the flashback with it, I personally think, and I don't know how it's going to unfold because I've only seen up to episode six. Same here. I personally think that she, she has some some other feelings about him more than just like patient feelings that maybe she's not aware of herself, but you kind of see that in their interaction here. I just th that's just the feeling that I get. Yeah, as we trace their story uh, through the next couple episodes, she makes some very curious decisions yes. that uh, are are not indicative of someone who's particularly uh, well grounded uh, or particularly professional. Well, and the thing with a lot of therapists, and I'm not going to say this about all therapists because obviously I don't know every single one, but a lot of the times the reason people become therapists is because they have gone through or are going through a lot of their own issues. So I'm curious if we get to find out a little bit more about her backstory, because you're right. She just does not seem particularly grounded. No, and I think it is interesting that as we explore what's going on with Billy, you know, he is, despite the fact that at, at this point in episode four, Agent Madani is convinced that he's still faking it. Uh, we are seeing just how difficult this is for him to process, mm -hmm. you know, this traumatic event. It really seems as though his memories of his life through the service, knowing Frank, knowing Curtis, no problems there. Yeah. And then from the point where he is re rehabilitating with the doctor, uh, it's just, you know, sort of a very essential gap uh, in, in his memory. But uh, apart from that, it seems like, you know, he's a little, he's a little ungrounded. He's a little uneven, but uh, it, it is interesting to watch him struggle really with these memories that he can't process, you know? I mean, I think even if he were to read an account or get an update from someone, here's everything that you did that you don't remember, uh, I think he'd still have a difficulty. What do you think about the way that they're showing this on the show? You know, his his way that he's dealing with his trauma. Oh, I think that they're doing it. I mean, not that I would know exactly what would be spot on, but I like the way that they're portraying it here, especially because with a head trauma like that, 
if he's having amnesia, but he's still remembering flashes, I, I like the way they do that. And what I also like is the insights that we do get from his therapist, because she's, you know, when, even when she says it, she's like, I see um, a man who is scared and acting out of like impulse and out of, and out of fear rather than that being his actual human nature. Although I would argue that we're seeing his, his human nature come out here a little bit. For sure. And I like in the chat here, uh, Black Magic 99 says, yeah, because she's a Harley Quinn. That's a really great. It's a great comparison. Yeah, it's a great and, comparison. Uh, I, I see that. Very apt as we go through these next few episodes. And uh, definitely a little back and forth too. Liberty Littman says, I think he's faking it. Black Magic says, I don't. Billy is a good liar, but all the ticks and twitches seem too real. And I actually I, do have to agree with that too. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I think that if he did remember, and I thought this in the first couple episodes, mm -hmm. if he remembered, he would have immediately gotten out of the hospital. He would have uh, found Frank, even though he's not easy to find. And uh, he would have paid him back for what he did to his beautiful face. And he definitely would have immediately um, looked for Curtis also. Yes, he definitely would have looked for yeah. Curtis as well. Uh, and speaking of Curtis, uh, it's nice to get him uh, reintroduced into uh, the Curtis. story here. I think, uh, you know, he's just a well-meaning guy who really all he wants to do is help veterans. And uh, it certainly gets he gets in trouble for it, you know. Oh, uh, but he keeps trying. He's, God he, bless him. Yeah, he's undeterred. <laughs> so uh, I think that it was uh, it was good. Like I said, it was good to see uh, Curtis, and you know he he and Frank kind of reconnect, uh, and we also revisit the idea of Billy's trauma, you know, uh, and. He, which of which there was a great deal from his time at uh, at the group home you know i mean it's uh, very specifically uh the he frank flashes back to uh there's they're there at the baseball field mm -hmm. which is a, i thought a nice scene a nice little flashback and then we see present day billy just kind of sitting out there in the cold and he does figure out where you know frank even knows where he's going to go next yeah. which guy he's going to go visit and he's correct i mean let's agent madani know but uh she does not get there uh in enough time and uh you know frank is later fairly dismissive about what happened to this guy because he's a child molester mm -hmm. uh but uh you know and that's that is the way that frank sees the world uh, what did you think? Did you find that to be overly convenient that in terms of storytelling that uh, Frank's like, oh, yeah, he's going to go to this guy's house. And also the fact that Frank doesn't himself actually go there, you know, to to try and find Billy. To me, that's interesting. It's interesting that Frank doesn't seem to want to to actually go like he seems like he's already got his closure, which I find a little bit hard to believe, especially because what he intended to happen didn't happen. He didn't kill him because he wanted to live, wanted him to live with what he did, but now he's not living with what he did because he doesn't remember what he did. Yeah. So it's, I'm surprised that he's not there just wanting to end it. Right. Like that I, seems like it would be the most. I think at this Frank point in the season, Frank is, you know, he's concerned about Billy, but he's not, a, he's not determined to take care of it. He's like, I kind of got this other thing I'm dealing with. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, we also get to see uh, Brett Mahoney, Agent Mahoney. We so it's uh, always nice. I like him you know, too. <laughs> we, we get to see him. We get to see Turk. You know, we're, we're getting Turk to see. Turk is my favorite scumbag ever. <laughs> every time I don't know what it is. He's in every single show, and every yes. time he shows up, I'm like, yeah, Turk. Yeah. Even though he's such, he's just such a criminal. And but there's something about him. <laughs> the things that Turk walks away from, you know, and we'll talk a little bit he's about that in a minute. He's lived through everything. 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 So uh, I like seeing uh, Agent Mahoney. Uh, kind of a seems like he turned out fine, but uh, kind of funny that uh, Agent Madani shoots him as soon as he walks in. That was hilarious. <laughs> I loved yeah. that scene. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a good thing he had his vest on. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Well, and like she said, it's a good thing he uh, she didn't aim for his head. Yeah, no, it's a it's a didn't go for the kill shot. Yeah, so they uh, they miss this opportunity to apprehend Billy, and then of course. Uh, Mahoney realizes, like, you know, you're not supposed to be involved in any of this. What are you doing here? You yeah. know, and he's he's trying to have her help him. You know, they're trying. He's trying to work with her, and it's she's really just not. About it. She's just not having it. No, you know? she's she's annoying me a little bit in this season right now. 
Yeah, I definitely I agree. She's getting like, to a point where I'm like, okay, come on. He's he's giving you every opportunity. You could get you could use the help on this. You going into situations like that alone is not smart. It's not a good idea. I mean, you saw what um, Russo did to the you know guy that he was molested by. Yes. So you know he's he's clearly unhinged. He was unhinged before this. Now he's a person that was previously had no conscience and didn't care. And I feel like some of that has to still be there somewhere. This is the, the ah this is the thing that I constantly go back to. If he doesn't remember doing the bad thing. Yeah. Does it count as him doing the bad thing? Like, if in his mind he has not done that and he couldn't fathom himself doing that, but he still did it. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, from a you know from a legal standpoint, of course it does. But right. uh, in terms of is he a better person than he was in season one? Exactly. I mean, he's still capable of it, but as far as he knows, he hasn't done it yet. So uh, that's a that's a great philosophical question. Which uh, if you're if you're joining us <laughs> in the chat, give us your thoughts. I do think that you know he's at least try he's under he understands he's been told that he shot agent madani he's been told that he shot curtis and he doesn't have any reason to want to be that person right now mm -hmm. so he's certainly in a place where he's trying to be better he's just not trying to be good you know as, as we see throughout these next couple good. episodes no. uh also in episode four, we have uh, Frank and the girl who eventually does tell us her name is Amy. Amy. Which, Real name. still not sure, you know. <laughs> I believe her more on this I believe one, her more. But yeah, because yeah. it's like, well, what are you going to lie about? <laughs> but uh, so they uh, continue to be holed up at, uh, at Agent Madani's apartment, uh, maybe making themselves a little bit too comfortable. But I think mm -hmm. it's great to see that Amy trusts Frank enough. Now, granted, she has to sneak out and do some internet research, but then she's like, oh, wait, this guy? The guy that they call the Punisher? Yeah, it's probably gonna have him on my side. And if anybody's gonna be able to help me, it's this guy. So she does open up to him, uh, and she talks about sort of the, her, basically enough of her backstory. You know, they had kind of hinted that she had these photos. We find out a little bit more about what she was doing mm -hmm. and unfortunately what happened to her friends. And uh, I think that we get a really powerful scene, which is that she can't sleep in Madonna's apartment until she crawls under the bed where she finally feels safe. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Frank even hears her crying off in the distance, you know, just kind of figuring that that's probably what she needed. So we get all this information about Amy uh, in, in this episode. Uh, give us your thoughts and how you think they do in terms of uh, portraying that, the you know, basically the emotions that she's trying to deal with at this point. Well, as we've talked about before, she is infuriating in the first few episodes. <laughs> yes. So when you get to this point, it definitely softens your view of her a little bit. I understand maybe a little bit more why she puts on that bravado and why she's so determined maybe to be on her own. Um, so seeing that, it's like, okay, it makes you more understanding of her character and it softens you up a little bit. So you end up kind of, I guess, liking her a little bit more or at the very least understanding you, her more. You can certainly sympathize with her plight, yeah. even if you still find her to be a little she bit abrasive, a little, a little annoying. annoying. But, but still. You, can, you can understand you <laughs> yes. know, that even if she's lying about her age, maybe she's not 16, she's still a young girl who mm -hmm. has been through something traumatic. I mean, very traumatic. She came home and found her friends all killed just because she was out getting dinner, you yes. know? So we really get to kind of understand what's been going on. And it really helps flesh out why she was so focused on running, mm -hmm. you know? It's just because that's what she's been doing. Right. And to stop seems to really go against everything uh, that she believed in. And why would she feel safe? Yeah, if right. she's not right, if she's trying to stay in one place, especially with a man she doesn't know. So, I mean, but still, after seeing everything he did, I would be like, I'm gonna stick with you, sir. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, I uh, couldn't find Daredevil in the phone book, so I'm gonna just, you know, go with the fact that I've got the Punisher the to Punisher, help me out. Yeah. So, I guess that's gonna good, be all right. Good trade. Uh, this episode ends with uh, Billy showing up at the doctor, at Dr. Dumont's uh, apartment, asking for help, covered in blood. Of course, the kind of relationship that they have, of course you want to help your patient. But there's ways to help your patient, and then there's ways that you're kind of really hurting your patient by enabling them. Uh, yes, enabling. Uh, <laughs> Perfect word. Did you, this is another infuriating character who we're starting to learn more about as these episodes go along. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of infuriating the way that she's 
you know, already gone through the ringer a few times to keep Billy safe, right? Well, yeah. First of all, she just let him get away. And somebody in the chat mentioned this last time, and I actually want to bring this up. I'm so sorry. I don't remember who it was. If you're watching, you know. Um, let us know. Let yeah. us know, please. But they had mentioned so, and, and I had the exact same thought when I was watching it, that when you when you're – She's, ugh, I can't say words right now. When he is leading Dr. Dumont through the hospital, like basically at gunpoint, or did he have a knife? He had some sort of a weapon that he got from the the security officers. Yes. Um, nobody noticed a crazy guy in a Jason mask leading a woman, like forcing a woman out with his, like nobody noticed any of that. He walked right by, like they're running into exactly what's going on. You don't check the people as they come out. Yeah. Anyway. Off of that subject. Um, she, yeah, she didn't reach out. She didn't say anything. She just let it happen. And now she's letting him stay there. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. It, it, yeah. I mean, you you know what he's done. So you know what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. And even if you feel comfortable that he doesn't want anything bad to happen to you, uh, that doesn't mean that it still couldn't happen. That doesn't mean that trouble couldn't show up on your doorstep. Or even that he goes off and does something else and then... Yeah theoretically you're held responsible because you're technically in charge of this person it's your patient yes you're not doing right by your patient by not having him be in some kind of care like he should be he should be detained he should yes. be monitored he shouldn't be because look at the things he does when he goes out into the world and we'll talk about them oh. in the next few minutes uh, you know there's nothing that he does where you're like oh well, it's not so bad that he's out no. <laughs> you know everything he does uh so that brings us to episode five one-eyed jacks which i thought was sort of a a fun little uh teaser the way that that episode starts with uh amy and frank uh playing cards and uh you know, look at that. Frank can learn something. You and know? they're bonding. Yeah, I do. I, thought I, that was I, cute. I got, especially <laughs> by this point, by episode five, I like their interaction. Yeah. It, it, it definitely, you know, it, 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 it evokes, I mean, she's much older, but it evokes the, the film, uh, The Professional, also known as Leon, with a very young Natalie Portman. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. And so as you just you sort of see, like, you know, especially, at, I'll jump ahead to episode six. It's like when he's talking to her about how to take a gun away from somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I really like that there's some degree of affinity that he has for her. And then she, of course, opens her big dumb mouth and says something she shouldn't. But, she you know. She can't help herself, she, apparently. She just has no <laughs> impulse control. Apparently, <laughs> she doesn't. Uh, anyway, we just referenced him. And uh, episode five does indeed have a return of Turk. And uh, I do like that Frank just shows up in, in his car and uh, he does have a great line, you know, when he's explaining to Turk, you know, the, all right, this is what's going to happen. The Russians, this is going to be the deal. We'll tell me of the pictures in the girl. And he's like, this is what you do. And he's like, I'm all about that life. I th Frank's oh, yeah. not usually funny. No, he's but not. But that was a good moment for that him, was. I thought. And I even have in my notes here, I just love Turk because he will do anything for money. He's like, I got out of that life, but Frank offers him some money and he's like, Okay. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, it's, oh, there's money involved. Okay, sure. yeah, great. Sure. Uh, and I also like sort of the you know the little Easter egg for those of us who watch all these shows. He's like, yeah, I was uptown for a while. Way uptown uh -huh. for Luke Cage, <laughs> yes. So uh, I thought that, uh, that that was nice. Uh, so I think that we really see, of these three episodes, this is kind of the big action sequence that we get. There are certainly some other things that happen, but... We see that the Russians are going to try and uh, bum rush or ambush Frank at, uh, at Turk's place. Mm -hmm. But don't worry. Our boy Frank is smart enough to know. He knows. You don't, you don't, uh, you know. Also, Turk sounded super sketchy on that phone well, call. Well, he also saw Turk get taken yeah. in a, in a <laughs> I guess, a, I don't know if we call it a rear naked choke, but yeah. in a chokehold. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, we get a pretty impressive all out Punisher Frank Castle scene. In the weight room, the in the gym weights. there. Just the way he used the weights, the kettlebells, everything. I was making actual noises during that scene. I was like, oh. Did any of the noise sound, noises sound like, <laughs> the official Frank Castle noise of, uh, I'm so glad I'm kicking guy's ass right now? I mean, it was it was cool to watch, and I definitely felt that way on the inside, but it was they were almost noises of pain. Of just Even though I wasn't feeling it, I was feeling it. Because I was like, hold, I mean, can you imagine getting hit in the head with a kettlebell? Do you know how heavy those are? I have a sense. I mean, I know I couldn't pick them up, but Frank. Oh, didn't, have, didn't seem to have any trouble. Yeah. Oh, that was incredible. But there were literally times when someone would get hit and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So bad. And really all that Frank needs is information. 
Yes. You know, and just give it, it to him. Just, yeah, it's you know like, who he is. This is so much easier if you just tell me what I want to know. Then we don't get the really yeah, cool fight scenes. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're glad that they don't tell him what they they want to know. That's right. You because remember, Russians. these are bad guys who are going to kill Frank. Mm -hmm. So what else is he going to do except for you know just hit them repeatedly in the face with weights? I love the one guy too with uh, the crazy cauliflower ear. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That guy. <laughs> he, he's yeah. definitely been doing so, some training. What we learn is that the Russians were acting on the orders of this billionaire from back home who now lives in New York. More about him in a little bit. Uh, so we basically have that. And at that point, basically, he and Amy realized that the Russians didn't really have anything to do with uh, the attempted hits on them. It, it's somebody else. So... Uh, you know, there are certainly easier ways to get information, but, uh, you know, in the, in the world of the Punisher, uh, I, you know, nobody wants to easily give up information. I do like that he goes back to Madonna's apartment and, uh, Amy asks, and he just gives the double thumbs up. You know, he's just like, oh, good. He's, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it went great. Yeah, don't just ignore the fact that I'm literally caked in like five different types of blood. You Bloody know? face, a yeah. couple of cuts. But I feel like at that point, she has to know what he's going into. So she has like, she has to expect it after everything she's seen from him so far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, that advances that part of the, the storyline. Uh, and... We're getting to see a little bit more, as I alluded to a couple of minutes ago, of Billy Russo out in the world. Oh, Lord. He overhears a session that Dr. Dumont's having with the veteran, so he meets up with that guy at the bar. Jake is his name, Jake right? is Jake, his name. Yeah. You're absolutely right, yes. So he meets up with Jake, oh, and uh, we sort of see this little social club. We see that in this episode, we see the, the first seeds of... You know, it's not that different than the, you know, the organization that Billy ran in season one, the beginning of season one, you know, oh, where yeah. he's got the former military guys that are available for hire. You know, he's he's basically putting a crew together. You yeah, know? he's doing what his normal nature just would do. So it shows you that Billy Russo is definitely still in there. He's just I feel like he's just been set back and he would still do all of those same things. Maybe not exactly the same way, but he still wants to do what naturally he would do. Yeah. And I think he likes to have, I think, I honestly think he likes to have lackeys kind of working for him. Yeah. And I think he's attracted to a specific, specific personality types. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Jake is clearly the kind of guy who likes to get wasted all day. It seems to be right up Billy's alley. Get you some know? booger sugar going yeah, on. Yeah, but although you know Billy's like, no, no, not me. I like these. That's where he draws the line. You he's know? like, he's I'll like, murder, I I'll yeah. drink. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm, look, I'm not here to do. I'm I'm not here to do key bumps with you, brother. Okay, <laughs> that's not why we're here. Okay, this is a bar. This is a respectable establishment for drinking. But you know, knock yourself out. Go ahead. Literally, knock yourself out. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know. I, I find it to be to be interesting that you know we see this interaction because at, at first you're like, you know, in some level Billy just kind of wants to hang out. You know, he wants to kind of get away from you know his rehab and having to get out of the hospital and hanging out with the doctor. So uh, you know that's kind of what you chalk it up to as like. He, he's just happy he made a friend, right? Yeah, and he has somebody that's like-minded who's been through similar experiences. I feel like he could never be friends with a civilian. That's just not his type. He doesn't have anything to talk to them about. He doesn't have anything to kind of bond with them over. He wants that camaraderie that you get that he had in the Army. Yeah, right, exactly. And we're, or we're, in the Marines, rather. In the Marines, yeah. yeah. yeah and some nice back and forth there with Jake about, yeah. uh, would you drink with a Marine? Uh, only if I have to. You know, some, some, you know, so it's like, yeah, see, look at these guys. They're getting along. And, uh, you know, he even knows who Billy Russo is, which actually makes sense. Of course. Because, you know, it, it was pretty major news. And I think, you know, Billy's like, oh, great, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to knock this guy out. And he's like, yeah, it's a you know, it's an honor to get to know you. He's like, oh, Jake, Jake's my guy. Which I find interesting because later in the episode when Russo is going ham on that tow truck driver, that's when Jake actually steps in and stops him from maybe killing him or doing something else. So it's funny that Jake is willing to be friends with Russo, but he kind of draws the line somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's an odd, I'm, I'm a little curious about that. Like how far will he end up going? Right, and I think uh, it'll be fascinating to kind of watch that uh, progress as well. We get more Curtis 
because uh, Agent Madani uh, seeks out Curtis. And uh, that, of course, is a group that that uh, not Billy, but Jake is a, a part of that group. So I like mm -hmm. the way that it's all uh, hinged together. Yes. And I don't know. We get kind of a, a, a great moment from uh, the actress's name is uh, Amber Rose Riva, who plays Agent Manani. Uh, kind of a, you know, a, an interesting account of, no, I haven't worn a uniform, but in service to my country, I've been through this. And I think she does a great job. Uh, give me your thoughts on that scene where uh, Agent Madani is participating in, in sort of the, the group session. Oh, I love that speech. Because if anyone has any cause to, or any rather, I guess, right to be there, it is her. Even though she didn't serve in the military, she has served for her country, she's Homeland Security. She also has been shot in the head, held her partner as he dies. Like she has just enough reason to be there, I think as anyone else. So it was nice to hear, and and I loved their reaction to that. They were like, "Oh, okay yeah, then." It's like, okay, so <laughs> got it. <laughs> you've seen some stuff. Yes. Let's keep it uh, PG thirteen. You've seen some stuff. All right, yeah. You sit right there, you know. And I, I like that. You know, you, he apologized for it, and he was like, "Yeah." Uh, so obviously, uh, you know, Curtis doesn't really have much to offer. Agent Madani, you know, he's also, of course, very concerned about Billy being on the loose, mm -hmm. as we see throughout all of these episodes that uh, Curtis is in. We, we see how he's uh, certainly a little bit jumpy uh, at the subject and, uh, you know, just uh, trying to play it safe. Uh, we get a... Um, we get a nice sequence from Amy in this episode where she uh, goes to town, not literally because she stays inside with Agent Madani's credit card. And uh, I just like, she's she's ordering food, she's getting a laptop. She's just- Forever 21. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She just buys all this stuff and it's like, man, what credit card does she have that they don't, uh, they, what do they consider suspicious activity? Seriously. That, it's like, yeah, in two hours you spent, you know, I don't know, like four grand. I don't know how much that laptop costs. Well, know? the last time that we actually went and bought a laptop that, you know, my husband needed for work, they declined because it was a it was a big purchase. The, client in, the card actually initially declined it. Yeah. And you have to text saying, oh, no, I do mean I really to make actually this purchase. I really actually want to buy this, yeah. yeah. So that was a little bit of a hard one because I was like, oh, I feel like that and the fact that Agent Madani has she, uh, never shopped at Forever 21, I'm sure. Yeah, I think that would be a red flag. <laughs> so they'd be you like, know? why are you going yeah, there? Yeah, it's like, yeah, why, why are you buying clothes here? We can understand a gift card. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's it's a nice way. I, I don't know. I, I'm finding throughout all these episodes that as infuriating as Amy was in the, the first few, it is definitely adding some levity to this show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm finding it to be, uh, you know, like we said before, season one, not particularly funny. Uh, we're able to get some laughs, mostly yeah. because Amy's there and, and a lot of the things uh, that she does. Uh, and uh, I also like that, you know, Frank's like ready to chastise her, but then it turns out she has good taste in pizza. So, you know, who's he? <laughs> so he just starts eating the pizza. Yeah, wow, he's I like, mean, oh, on, all right, then. You know, he'd, be, he'd been away from New York for a little while. You know, they don't have good pizza like that in Michigan. I'm assuming if, if, if you're from Michigan and you know better, you please let me know. Were you going to say something? I just feel like pizza is never as good anywhere as it is in New York. Um, I, I'm just glad to hear somebody <laughs> say that. And, you, and you're not from New York. I'm, not I'm from biased. New York, but, but I've but, had pizza in quite a few states, and yeah. New York is by far the best. That's right. We talk about the important, <laughs> hard hitting topics right here. Like you want to talk? Pizza. You want to talk about Chicago pizza? You go somewhere else. <laughs> we're not going to talk about deep dish here on the Punisher After Show. Uh, what are some of the uh, comments we're getting in the chat about uh, some of these storylines that uh, we're checking in on? Amy would have loved to have had Danny Rand's credit card, Ghost. Ooh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so true. Danny, I, I, don't, I don't think that that uh, Danny's credit limit, I don't think there is a credit limit. I don't think they would ever call him for suspicious purchases. No. You know, because he was just buying warehouses left yeah, and right. You whatever know? He's he like, yeah, it's doing. fine. There was some trouble here. I bought the warehouse. It's fine. So. Uh, Black Magic also said she's also in Homeland, though, so they might get special permissions or something. 
Is that in reference to the credit card? Oh, that's yeah. I suppose that's probably so. What maybe it means. just yeah. like whatever. It's like, well, I don't know what you're spending money on because it's possible that you could be undercover. Whatever you're doing. That's a great point. Yeah. A lot of the people in the chat have uh, higher credit limits than Z and I do, so we don't. Uh, you know, we don't worry about uh, those much kind higher. of things. Yeah, <laughs> my credit cards over here. Like, are you sure you want to spend that much money? That's kind of a lot of money. You don't yeah. have that much. Um, <laughs> Billy Russo, uh, Ghost also says Billy Russo and Eric Killmonger would have been an interesting friend and uh, duo. Sure, I like I, absolutely. I think that uh, they would find some common grounds. You know, uh, I, I absolutely think so. Yeah. Uh, and one of the other things that we saw in this episode when we were talking about Doctor Dumont is, uh, you know, it's it's not subtle, but they don't really call attention to it. it you have to be paying attention to notice. She's got those cut marks on on her wrist. Mm -hmm. You know, so just in case, up until this point you maybe had a, a, a thought that, no, nah, she seems to be on the up and up. Not everything is as it seems, which as we delve into uh, episode six will become uh, increasingly uh, apparent. Uh, we all, But speaking of self-harm, we do see our uh, creepy religious uh, Nazi friend whom uh, some of the uh, some of the summaries that you can read online are referring to this character as Pilgrim. So I hope that's not too much of a spoiler that I'll mention it, but it's really hard to refer to him as anything. So, well, that's what I keep wanting to call him now. Yeah. Yeah, so just, but I just keep calling him creepy religious guy just in my head to... Creepy religious former Nazi guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do find him to be interesting because of the fact that despite his actions, especially as we'll talk about in episode six, he is still really, in his mind, he's really bound by his faith. Mm -hmm. Like, he is following his faith to the letter of the law. Oh, yeah. That is the, the way he sees things. Oh, yeah. And uh, I do find him to be a very interesting uh, interesting character. Uh, we see that he feels the need to not only harm himself, there's reference made that he's been to New York before and it might be difficult for him to go back. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we're definitely at this point, I would say episode five is really building, you know, uh, there are definitely some transitional episodes, uh, so far in the season, you know, we're, uh, going to continue building, uh, in episode six. Before I move on, you have such copious notes. Does anything stand out for you about, uh, episode five before we move on to episode six? I have... <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about this. It's just funny looking down because it said, I have Jim fight scene is in all capitals. Amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, it's just like a lot about that. <laughs> oh, we get to, that's where we get a name finally, Nikolai Palos, Palos? Yes. I couldn't, the hard, I had a hard time with the last name, but I at least know that the first name is Nikolai. So yes. I like that we get a little thread and we can um, hopefully move on and find out more with that. And indeed we do in episode six. Yes, absolutely. And speaking of episode six, uh, it it manages to start off in a fun way with uh, Frank and Amy uh, it, you oh, know, at a very ominous gosh. looking door. Yeah, well, and you don't know it's going to be that. That's yeah, you're Sorry, not quite sure what's in there. No. Nope. But uh, she really plays up what she's dressed up as, which, uh, unfortunately, she knows that this is a place uh -huh. where you go to uh, take pictures of underage girls. <clears throat> or boys. Uh, and the guy underage doesn't... people. Yes, it's a great point. Mm. She's an underage girl. That's why I said that. But yeah, but yeah. you're basically... It's basically an anything goes kind of uh, photo studio and the guy as he says doesn't judge i'm sorry but that, i don't think that that's the right yeah. term that no, you're using sir the, the not judging means that you should be appearing in front of a judge yes. because you should definitely be judging people you, that are willing to be your clientele yes but uh you know frank's got the money and you know amy makes a good point like he's definitely a creep but you know does he warrant killing well, and Black Frank, Magic disagrees. He says Frank should have blown that guy's chest open. I understand. Sorry, go on. I understand that point. <laughs> I do and too. You are not wrong, but Amy felt differently. And I do like, because we managed to get a little bit more humor in here, she's like, but if it'll make you feel better, why don't you burn the place down? That was great. So that puts him out of business, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I obviously, Frank has probably killed people that aren't even as bad as that guy, you know? So at this point, 
why not kill him because you know what he's up to. I just think if you're facilitating that and you're allowing something that to happen and you're quote unquote not judging and like turning a blind eye, yeah, you're a piece of trash that probably shouldn't be allowed to live. So I'm actually kind of on on Frank's side on that one. I'm surprised that he let Amy talk him out of that. Yes, a little bit. And uh, he references a little bit later in the episode that uh, he let. Uh, well, there's another instance that'll come up uh, shortly, but there are a couple of instances where he let people live that he shouldn't have, and it, mm -hmm. it it's he says it's bothering him, you know, because that's not what the Punisher does. No. The Punisher kills bad people or people who are maybe a little bad but trying to kill him. So that makes them even worse people. Well, look, if you're trying to kill someone, yeah. then they you're a have... You're automatically a bad well, person. Also, they have the right to defend themselves and kill you before they kill them. You know what I you know, you know, I'm oh, I do. I do know what you mean. Yeah, you. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, look, if somebody's dying, it's not going to be Frank. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so early in this episode, uh, we have the moment where Billy comes back to the doctor's uh, apartment. And of course, she's busy getting dressed. And of course, she doesn't freak out. She just sternly closes the door. I think that that really set the stage for where this episode was going to go. I didn't know that it was going to happen in this episode, but I'm like, okay, they're, they're laying some groundwork here. Did you feel oh, that way when I we see that? I knew it was going to happen in the beginning of this of the season, in like episode what, two, maybe? Right. Or three. So, yeah, just the way that they're talking to each yes, other. Yes, yeah. and the way but she kept looking at him. But especially when she starts harboring a fugitive. But yeah, right there, I was like, oh, okay, I know where this is going to end up. Although, the way it ends up like that is... Also indicative of indicative is that the right word of their relationship? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it, it it absolutely is, oh. and uh, the fact that you know he's well, this is the end of the episode, but we're talking about them, so let's follow, let's pull on this thread that they're at a point where uh, he's behaving violently, and you know uh, she stabs him in the hand with a, a letter opener. And even that's flinch. the moment when he gets turned on and yep. decides to kiss her. Yep, doesn't and, even flinch. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, all right, now this is my kind of foreplay. Now we know what Billy Russo's into. I mean, we kind of knew what Billy true. Russo was into <laughs> from last season. But uh, yeah, this Billy Russo is uh, definitely definitely into uh, some you know in interesting things. Um, uh, so we just see that it's really the nature of... Can we call this a dysfunctional relationship? I don't think I I'm going. Say yes. I don't think I'm going out on the out on a limb there. No, you know. No. Uh, so I'm very interested to see where that goes uh, in episodes uh, seven, eight, and nine. There's some great comments in here, just really quickly about Billy Russo, and I know we talked about this. Um, yesterday but uh sawyer here says billy russo with scars is still better looking than 80 percent of all people they needed to make him much uglier with the scars we've definitely all agree with that yeah i um, I, de I definitely think that you know look uh, obviously this actor wants to be able to you know be recognizable be but like i think i said last night if you had jigsawed part of his face or you know there's ways to do it yeah. where you can still recognize the actor and not have it be uh, cartoony like the Punisher Warzone movie. There, there was a middle ground for sure, yeah. and they did not get anywhere near that middle ground. No, as Sawyer puts it, he also, he says, "Yeah, he looked like he got into a fight with a big cat." <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of amazing way to put it. You're right. There was a middle ground, but they uh, didn't quite pull it off. I don't think. No, no, no. I yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely agree with that. So uh, we are going to have to keep a really careful eye on the interaction between Dr. Dumont and Billy Russo. Also, who's KM? That's kind of what set him off because he read his file mm -hmm. and that it's reminding her of KM. Uh, you know, that could that could be so many different. Another client, an old lover. For yeah. some reason, I get the feeling it's an old lover, but yeah. I could be totally wrong. Uh, you know, I feel like she's got a lot of clients who are old lovers. I'm just going to guess. You I know? mean, she's dealing with a lot of people. That have been, obviously, she's a tr deals with trauma, um, but she also dealt with Jake and... Yeah, no, that's Others true. Others like him, so. Yeah, so we, we will, uh, as I said, we will keep an eye on that. Uh, so we, uh, d we do get the photos developed, and we uh, see Frank and Amy kind of go into, uh, into action, really, to get 
now this is the this is Nikolai that they're trying to get, right? Yes. Yeah. This is when they're going. I'm to trying to keep my Russian straight. My apologies. And, <laughs> it's kind of hard. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit. So uh, you know, and I I kind of like the you know Frank doesn't have any trouble getting the driver of his car, and you know uh, that Amy, was smooth. That, Sorry yeah. to interrupt, but no, that no, was yeah, so the, the stumbling around yes. Frank, no problem. And then I was impressed by Amy's ability to get into the restaurant mm -hmm. and the very smooth, the specials are on the first page. I didn't know those were in season. I'm like, this is this is some uh, some sharp banter, some interaction. Oh yeah. Plus, the way that she loses a tail by having the reversible skirt, letting her hair loose, I was just like, you know, so impressed. This is not her first rodeo. Nope. <laughs> and by this point in episode six, like I actually like her, you know, I. Uh, cringe a little bit when she asks Frank about his daughter more than once. She The second time, I was like, dude, you got to stop. The first time you kind of got away with it, it's like, all right, yeah, you're trying to connect. It's a valid question. You're trying to kind of make it light. Like, oh, she would have been 15. Look out. That would have been trouble. Right. You know? And, you know, in some ways, I could see Frank being able to focus on that and be like, yeah, she's right. That's, you know, kind of a fun thought to be able to have. But... What about this guy makes you think he wants to talk about his dead family well, on a regular basis? Exactly. And on top of that, maybe if he lost them in a different way, like a car accident he wasn't in or something, it would still be yeah. just as painful. But he literally saw them murdered yeah. in front of him. Yeah. And it was part of an elaborate plot to keep him quiet. That his you know. best friend did. Yeah, I mean, there's just too much there. There's a, yes, there is indeed uh, a, a lot of uh, pain uh, there. So in dealing with this photograph and Nikolai, uh, we have this first reference made to uh, Anderson and Eliza Schultz, who fund alt-right websites. Uh, they're buying Congress. Uh, so they're sort of like, you know, for people who know, you know, just in the real world, just think of like the Koch brothers, uh, 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 Sheldon Adelson, you know, those types. So th these are these big money people who make a lot of donations. They funnel a lot of money to follow a specific agenda. And not, and because the last thing we want to do is talk about politics, I'll throw George Soros in there too. So you see, I'm not saying that it's just conservative people who are uh, throwing money around and things like this. So there are these kinds of people. They think that their kid could be president. But, you know, as, as woke as we all are in 2019, uh, I think they feel like, well, an actual secret gay relationship isn't part of the plan that they're trying to, you know, because they do appear to have a conservative agenda. So that's not going to really fit into what they are. So the, the Russians, as we find out from Nikolai's interaction with Frank, they just want to own this guy. You know, they want to have this photo to leverage him. So that's actually the angle that they're working. So, uh, you know, and it, it's, it's another one of those moments where Frank has someone who's uh, not a good guy. No. Whom he could kill. Yep. What did you think of his decision to to not kill him? As soon as he said he had a daughter, yeah. I was like, oh, this isn't going to oh, happen. Frank. Because Amy just brought up his yeah. daughter and he's didn't want her, Nikolai's daughter, to have to go through what he went through with his family. And, and the thing is, I, t I totally understand. I do get it. That's one of those things where, like, yeah, he's a really bad man. But when you have children, it kind of changes the situation. Because to to Nikolai's daughter, he's probably a great guy. Yeah. And does everything for her. Yeah. And you're going to end up ruining someone else's life. Yeah. It's like, and, and Frank's like, you know, leave the country, don't come back. Which, by the way, if he had listened to Frank, he might still be around. So Frank spares his life. But, you know, it's not a much, much more life left. There's not a lot more living left to do because our friend, uh, the, the pilgrim, immediately takes care of him. And he doesn't even ask the not the face because you're like, oh, this is the kind of guy who's going to shoot me in the face. Oh, he just closed his eyes. Yeah. He knew. He just knew that this, this is not going well. Do you think that any of these people know him, know the pilgrim from being I, in New York? Because he clearly has a history there. The, I got that impression. It seemed like that, it, right? That it's like, oh... Uh, S. I don't know. We shouldn't swear unless we have to. Uh, this oh, guy is. Oh crap! Oh, oh heck! <laughs> uh, this guy's here. He's like, and he's just like, I'm gonna close my eyes because uh, I don't need to see the bullet coming. Yeah, and uh, I do. I, I, you see, again, Frank manages 
to uh, work some comedy in there. He's like, call me old fashioned, but I don't work with Russians, you know? And it's like, yeah, it's, the old, it's like the old days. Yeah. We didn't work with Russians, sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, everything's really starting to come to a head here. You know, we're starting to see just what this plot is, Amy's involvement, what kind of people are going to be targeting her and Frank. And the Pilgrim's coming. Uh, obviously, because he approaches Agent Madani, wants to try to find out where Frank is. And, uh, you know, he, again, is just sort of talking to her from a spiritual place of, you know, don't, why would you protect bad people? You know, like, just tell me I'll leave you alone. Nobody needs to know anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that int that interaction to be interesting. I also liked that she brought all the dishes back to the lab. It's like, yep. You know, just dust them, uh, you know, for, for Prince. Well, uh, she's clearly shaken up by yes. him. I mean, she he found her yeah. after seeing her once in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, in, in Ohio. In Ohio, but Ohio point yeah. taken. It, it's very rural Ohio. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I meant just like in a police station that was clearly yes. outside of many towns. The and nearest hospital was he, two hours he away. He does make the point that she is easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he doesn't really uh, need that. Uh, so, yeah, I think that... Uh, Clearly, Frank starts to realize that's like this is a problem that has to be dealt with. But as we see in this episode, and we only have a couple minutes left, the bigger problem, of course, is uh, Billy Russo's uh, gang of flunkies who are, you know, considering like, hey, this worked out really well. We got our our buddy's car. Why don't we start a crime spree? You know, he's yeah. like, how about we rob a bank? I know a place. And you're just listening to all of this, like, is there no part in Billy Russo? Because clearly, we know the kind of guy he was. So. The answer is no, there's not. But you would think that there's somewhere in Billy Russo that's like, yeah, but you know, one thing, let's like not start a crime wave. Let's just hang out. And, you know, if one of us gets in trouble, let's get each other's backs. You know, does that sound OK? I mean, I think that with they've mentioned it before that what got Billy in all of that w trouble or in that situation was greed. He grew up extremely poor with no parents. He was in a home. He was in a group home. He didn't have they showed it, showcased it in that uh, scene by the baseball diamond. Or yeah baseball diamonds, is that what you call it? Baseball field. That he never had the things that other rich kids had. And in his life, he was basically doing anything for money. That's yeah. essentially why he was doing all of it. He just wanted to have all the money and all the power. And I think, especially at this point, he has, again, nothing. So I think the thought of having all this money with a crew of guys is kind of enticing for him. Yes. And the uh, driver of the tow truck, I think probably would have come out okay if he just hadn't uh, had such a big mouth. Why, why did he say that? Why does everybody have to call him a freak when they see him? Like, clearly, this is a dangerous individual. Also, there's four or five of them. You know, don't run your mouth. Just maybe something like, I've got a kid. You know, something <laughs> that might put something yeah. somewhere uh, in his head. So... Uh, that pretty much brings us through, you know, we already jumped ahead to the end of the episode where we oh. see uh, Dr. Dumont and, and Billy Russo. So let's take a quick moment, our final moment here, for predictions. Now, neither of us have seen episode 7, 8, and 9. So these are legit predictions. TV predictions. Zia, what do you think we're going to see? Let's start off with uh, Billy and the Doctor. What oh. do you think we're going to see? Well, I see them just becoming a crime couple at this yeah. point. Honestly, I think that she's going to end up falling for him and she has yeah. her own Who issues. Whoever threw Harley Quinn in there, that's a great point. Yes. That's very astute. Yes. And uh, I feel like that's what we're getting. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I also, uh, I think that the uh, Pilgrim's not going to go away mm -hmm. and just wait for everybody to handle Billy Russo. Uh, I do think that there will probably be a moment where the Billy situation is about to be resolved and, oh, hey, remember me? Whoops, you didn't. And now you are fighting the war on two fronts, as uh, Curtis warned Frank against. So uh, I, let us know in the chat if you're watching live or if you're watching the archive what you think is going to happen in episode 7, 8, and 9. And again, only if you haven't watched them right now. If you already know, don't give us pretend predictions because that's cheating. Uh, <laughs> I also want to just say really fast, this episode... Uh, and this, this season as a whole has looked beautiful. Uh, there was just that great scene across from the private school with Frank and Amy just sitting on the bench and just the two of them talking. It was just like, it was such a nicely framed shot. So, 
you know, it's not just like awesome fight scenes with, you know, weights and sinks, you know, getting broken over people's heads. Although that is fun. I love all that stuff, but I also like the fact that it's just the attention to the detail. So it's all around a great show. And we hope you're enjoying Punisher season two. And we hope you're enjoying our after show to hear more of us talking about the Punisher. <laughs> we will be on our other show that we do, Marvel TV Weekly, Sunday at 10. And you may have heard the announcement earlier today. We are both on Marvel Movie News over on the Popcorn Talk Yay! Network, Thursdays at 1 Pacific. But if you want more Punisher After Show, I know this is a lot of information. Punisher After Show will be back next Wednesday at 10 Pacific, and then again at 3 Pacific. And then we will do a standalone episode at 4 Pacific for episode 13. So we got three after shows coming up next week. So you guys so can hear us talk about a lot of the Punisher. A lot of Punisher. A lot. And if you uh, missed any and all of that plug, just uh, follow me on Twitter at ChristianDMZ. I'll tweet out the links. And Zia, where do people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Zia underscore land. It's XIA underscore land. And on Facebook at Zia Landerson. All right. Well, uh, thanks again to Zia and uh, thanks to uh, everyone. We hope that our friend April is able to join us next week. Mm -hmm. Our other panelists hopefully will be feeling better. And uh, we will see everybody next Wednesday at 10 Pacific. So long. Hi. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and Linda Maria Menounos would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world. And we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.